I want you to picture for yourself this triangle here. And what would happen to this triangle if I, say for example, doubled the size of the size of each of the sides. So I double this side, double this side, double this side. What would the triangle look like? Would it change shape? Would the angles change? Try and picture that now. And what if I um, took the sides of this triangle and I, I made them each three quarters of the size that they are now. So this one three quarters of this size, this one three quarters of this size, this one three quarters of this size. Would it change the shape of this triangle? Would it change the angles in this triangle? Try picture that for yourself. Okay, I've got a little video here that's going to show that. What I'm doing in this little video is I've literally taken each one of these sides and I just keep growing it by exactly the same factor. So whatever factor I grow this one by, do the same for that, do the same for that. So I'm going to grow it and shrink it, each of those sides, um, and I'll show you what happens to the triangle. So let me show you my little video now. Can you see that as we grow that triangle, if we're growing each side by the same factor, the overall shape of that triangle doesn't change at all and the size of the angles don't change at all. But this only works if you grow all the sides in the same proportion. In other words, if you double this, you double this, you double that, right? Um, if you don't do that, then obviously, then it is actually not going to work that the shape stays the same and the angles stay the same. So let's just have a look here at this example. So say, for example, I said, okay, I'm not going to change that side, but I am actually going to grow the other sides. So I'm not growing all sides in proportion because this side isn't changing. Can you see how as I change the length of the other side, it totally changes the shape of the triangle and it also changes the size of the angles. Now this relationship between sides and angles in a triangle turns out to be a really important one. What we see and what we have learned from watching those little videos is that basically if we take this triangle here and we just stretch it. The new stretched triangle will have the same angles as this triangle. So if we've taken a triangle and we've doubled all its sides, the new triangle we know will have exactly the same angles as the previous one. And in fact, it works the opposite way around as well. If I know that this angle, this triangle and this triangle have the same angles, if I know that they have the same angles, then I know that the sides of this triangle are just some factor bigger than the sides of this triangle. In other words, they're in proportion. And this idea, the fact that these two triangles have the same angles and their sides are in proportion is what we call similar triangles. So to summarize, what we have is that if we see two triangles where the second triangle is just where every side of this first triangle has been grown by a certain factor, then we know that these all shrunk by a certain factor, then we know these two triangles are similar, and we know that the corresponding angles will be equal. Now, one thing I do like to do when I'm using geom doing geometry is to use color because it helps me. So if I look at these triangles, which are the sides, which are the corresponding sides? So the sides that you know are in the same place in the triangle look the same in the triangle. So if I see, you know, this is the sort of shortest side of this triangle. The corresponding side in this triangle will be that one, the shortest side here, right? Um, and then, and I say I'm going to color that red. And then this one I'm going to color blue. And you can see the one that looks the sort of same as that is that one, right? Um, and then let's go for green for the last one. I'm going to color this side in here green and make this side green. And I will do that when I am. Um, you, I think it's very useful in geometry always to have some colored pencils around so that you can do that. 
Because then we can easily see, you know, are the sides in proportion? In other words, let's have a look. What's the red side in the first triangle over the red side in the second triangle, right? It's AB side AB over side DE. And that is going to be equal to 1 over 2, right? This is 1, this is 2. Now let's have a look at the um, blue, right? Let's look at the blue sides. What is the proportion there? BC over EF. That is 2 over 4. And if we know our fractions, that cancels down nicely to 1 over 2. And let's have a look at our green ones. We can see that our green is D. Oh, let's go with the first triangle, the small, the small triangle first. AC over... Oh, I'm making a mess here. AC over DF is 2 comma 3 over 4 comma 6. And that is just equal to 1 over 2 as well. So that's where we can see that all the pairs of corresponding sides are in proportion, right? Every single side in this triangle is two times as big as the side in the first triangle. So all these sides are equal, so we know that the angles will be equal. So between the red and the blue, it's 80 in this triangle. So in this triangle, between the red and the blue will be 80. Between the red and the green in this triangle, it's 60. So in this triangle, between the red and the green, it'll be 60. And in this triangle between the green and the blue is 40, so in this triangle between the green and the blue will be 40. And as I said, it works the other way around as well. If we're given this triangle here, which has got the same corresponding angles equal to this one, so 60, 60, 80, 80, 40, 40, right? If they're, so that's this fancy word, equiangular, right? Equal angles, right? This the angles in the triangles are equal to each other, the corresponding angles are equal, then what we know is that the sides will be in proportion, the corresponding sides will be in proportion. So if we went from here to here doubling, then every single side would be doubled. If we went from here to here multiplying by 0 0.3, every single thing, right? Every single side will be multiplied by 0 0.3. So in a case like this, when we see that we've got equiangular triangles, we know the triangles are similar, and so we know that the sides will be in proportion. So again, let us just use some color to get our, our, our ideas straight. So again, I'm going to go from 60 to 80 in red, so from 60 to 80 in red. Um, and then from 80 to 40 in blue, from 80 to 40 in blue, and then here in green. Now, what the corresponding sides in proportion will mean, if I take wh whatever fraction I get for the blues, I must get the same fraction for the greens, the same fraction for the reds. So I've been given information about the blues. So I can write that. So let me start... Um, let me start, because I'm going to be wanting to get to the big triangle, let me start with that one. But if I start with a big triangle at the top, I must always keep the big triangle at the top. If I start with a small triangle at the top, I must always keep the small triangle at the top. So I'm going to start with a big triangle at the top. So EF over BC is equal to 3 over 2, right? Now, if I want to figure out what the side of this size side the size of the side is well i know that de over ab right it must be equal to this right because the corresponding sides have to be in proportion but now i know that ab is equal to 1 so i know that de over 1 is equal to 3 over 2 so in other words de is equal to 3 over 2, which if we want to put it in decimals is 1.5. And then the green will have exactly the same pattern. I know that, start with the big triangle because that's where I've done, DF over the other green, it's AC, has to also be equal to 
3 over 2 because the sides are in proportion. So df over 2 comma 3 is equal to 3 over 2. Let's write it all as decimals so we can just go to our calculator. So then I want to get what df is equal to. So I multiply this side of the equation by 2.3. I must multiply this side by 2.3. And let me just do that on my calculator. And I get 3.45. So this side of the triangle is 3.45. Okay, one last little quick thing. You're regularly going to be asked, are these two triangles similar? And we know now there are two ways to show two triangles are similar. You either have to show that all the corresponding sides are in proportion, or you have to show that all the corresponding angles are equal. But with the angle story, we can actually shortcut it because we actually only need two angles to be equal. Why is this? Well, because once you know that this angle is 60 and this angle is 80, because the sum of angles in a triangle is 180, this one will have to be 40. And of course, if this is 40, this is also going to be 40 because the sum of angles in a triangle is 180. So 60, 80 plus this 40, right? So in fact, the minute you see two angles in this triangle equal to two corresponding angles in this triangle, you can immediately conclude that the, um, the two triangles are similar. And we write this as follows. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. So these three lines like that um, are the symbol for is similar 